In this video, we're going to be talking about setups within the manufacturer workspace of Fusion 360. First thing we need to do is go into our manufacturer workspace. Once we're in our manufacturer workspace, we then need to go to create a setup. To do that, you go to this top left corner and inside this drop down is the option for new setup. Alternatively, you can also click this icon. Now in this video, we're going to be talking about turning and turn mill setups. First thing we need to specify is our operation type here. And inside this drop down, we can then specify it's a turning or a turn mill setup. Once we've specified it's a turning setup, we can then also specify if we are using the primary or the secondary spindle. In this case, we'll leave it as primary spindle. Now, the first thing we need to do for this setup is to align our stock with our model. As you can see, the stock isn't quite aligned with our model. To do this, we need to clear this selection here. We can then hover over the cylinder of the part and select it. This then aligns the stock with the rotary axis of our model. As you can see here, the Z is pointing in the wrong direction. To correct this, you just need to tick this flip Z axis box here. This is now ensured that the Z is pointing in the correct direction relative to our machine. We can also specify a different position for the origin. As you can see in here, we have different options. I always tend to go with model front. And what this means is our Z0 is aligned to the front of our model. What we can then do is specify which of these models is the part we're going to be machining. You highlight this field and you can select the model. As you can see, that has automatically recalculated the stock so that it's relative to the size of our part. The next thing we need to do is tick this box, spun profile. And what this does is it essentially rotates the part round and it will project the highest points of the geometry so that the turning tool paths do not violate this geometry. The final thing to do whilst we're in this tab is to specify the work holding. So inside this drop down here, we have the option for from solid. What we can then do is select the body for the chuck. The next thing we want to do is to ensure that the size of this stock in our setup matches the same sizes as the stock in reality. To do this, we need to go into the stock tab. As you can see here, we have different options for specifying different stocks. For this though, we need to keep it as fixed size cylinder. The diameter we're going to keep as 130 and the length I'm going to adjust to 170 millimeters. The next thing is to specify where that part is going to be sitting inside this stock. As this is the first setup, I always tend to have it offset from the front and just put a small offset in here, so about half a millimeter. You can now see that there is half a millimetre between the front of our part and the front of the stop. The final tab is the post-process tab. And inside here, you can specify which coordinate offset you're going to be outputting to, whether it's G54, G55, G56, and so on. If it is zero or one, this will output to G54. 
if it is number two, this will then output to G55. If it is number three, this will output to G56. You get the idea. For this, we'll be outputting to G54. As you can see, we have our first setup. You can rename this to be whatever you like. Now that we have our first setup, I'm now going to show you how to create a second setup. So if you imagine we've machined all of this first side, and now we want to transfer this to another spindle and machine the second side. Just going to undraw this chuck. And now create a new setup. We're going to select the secondary spindle. And same as before, as you can see, the stock isn't referenced to the rotary axis of the part. So like we did before, we need to clear this selection and select this cylinder for the rotary axis of the part. As you can see, the Z is now pointing in the correct direction. One thing we want to do is make sure it's aligned to the model front. Same as before, we need to ensure that it's selected the right body, which it has. And we also need to tick spin profile. We can now specify our stock. If we go into our stock tab and inside this drop down box here, we can select this option from preceding setup. As you can see, this has took the stock position and values from our preceding setup and it has then positioned it so that it is in the correct place for our second side setup. You can also tick this box here for continue rest machining. This means it will look at the tool pass from the first setup and it will know where the stock is for our second side setup. You can then go into the post process tab. And as I mentioned before, you can increment this so that it calls up a different work offset. With our first setup being G54, we can now set our second one for G55. To do that, increment this to a number two. And then same as before, we can rename this so it reads side two.